as I look at the circuit in front of me, I can see it's a series circuit because there's only one current path. Now the first thing I'm going to do in analyzing this circuit is to draw my VERP table. So I'll label my resistors R1, R2, R3, and add a row for total. And then I'll add my column headings, V, I, R, and P, for voltage, current, resistance, and power. Now as I fill in my table, it's important to note that I always have to use SI units since I'm not going to write my units in specifically every time. Alright, there's my table. What can I fill in right away? Well, I know the total voltage is 10 volts because that's the voltage on the battery. And I can fill in my resistances. R1 is 30 ohms, R2 is 20 ohms, and R3 is 50 ohms. If I know any two things in a row, I can always figure out the other two. But at this point, I don't have two things in any one row, so I need to figure something else out. What am I going to do? Well, I can figure out the equivalent total resistance for a series circuit. On my reference table, I can see that the equivalent resistance is R1 plus R2 plus R3, which is going to be 30 plus 20 plus 50, or 100 ohms. Now I know two things in that total row, therefore I can calculate the other two. Let's start with current. If V equals IR, then I must equal V over R, which is 10 volts over 100 ohms, or 0 0.1 amps. So I'll fill that in, 0 0.1 amps. That means I have a current of 0 0.1 amps going through my total circuit. And since there's only one current path, I must have 0 0.1 amps everywhere. Therefore, I can fill in the current for my other resistors. Now, I know two things in those rows. I can figure out the others. If V equals IR, V for R1, the voltage drop across R1, this voltage drop is going to be 0.1 amp times 30 ohms, or 3 volts. So I drop 3 volts across R1. Likewise, I drop 2 volts across R2 and 5 volts across R3. To figure out power, that one's pretty easy. Power is just equal to current times voltage. So 0.1 amp times 30... 0.1 amp times 3 volts, excuse me, is 0.3 watts, 0.2 watts, 0.5 watts, or my total, which I could get by adding up my powers for R1, R2, and R3, or by taking IV for the total, is going to be 1 watt. Let's check this now that we're done. We know in a series circuit that current is always the same. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 amps. Those are all the same. Good. We also know in a series circuit that the voltages add up. So 3 plus 2 plus 5 equals 10. Or we could follow this taking a look at Kirchhoff's voltage law. Pick any point we want to. Let's say we start here in the upper left, and let's make a loop and look at all our voltages. The first thing we see is a plus 3 volts. Then we see a plus 2 volts. Next we see plus 5 volts. And finally, as we go around our circuit back to our starting point, we see a negative 10. And if everything works out, these should all add up to 0. Let's look. 3 volts plus 2 volts is 5 volts, plus another 5 volts is 10 volts. Minus 10 volts equals 0. Looks like we've got a pretty good circuit. So to sum up, for a series circuit, our voltages across each resistor add up to the total. Our current through each element is the same. Our total resistance is the sum of our resistances, and the powers of each of the elements add up. In a similar fashion, we can look at a parallel circuit. We can tell it's a parallel circuit here because there are multiple current paths. For a parallel circuit, we're going to start this the same way we did our series circuit. We're going to make our VERP table. We have three resistors, R1, R2, and R3. We'll add in a row for total, and our V, I, R, and P for voltage, current, resistance, and power. 
Again, remembering voltage is really the potential difference or the voltage drop across any given element in our circuit. Of course, we always have to use SI units when we make our table. And let's start off by dropping in what we already know. We know our total voltage is 10, and we have three resistors of 30 ohms each. 30, 30, 30. Now, there are a couple ways I could go about doing this at this point, but let's start off just to practice it by looking at how we get the equivalent resistance or the total resistance. For a parallel circuit, 1 over our equivalent or our total is going to be 1 over 30 plus 1 over 30 ohms plus 1 over 30 ohms. You add up the reciprocals of the resistances and then you take the reciprocal of that answer. That'll work. However, in this circuit, there's also a way where we can figure out and analyze our entire circuit without using that equation. So I'll leave it to you to prove what that total resistance is, but let's go do it the other way. As we take a look at our circuit, we can say any point we want is ground or zero. So let's call the point at the negative side of the battery zero volts. Then we know anywhere on a wire must have the same voltage, the same potential, so that must be zero volts, that must be zero volts, and that must be zero volts. If the bottom is zero, the top of the battery must be 10 volts. Anywhere on this wire must be 10 volts. So now, just looking at my picture, I can see that the voltage drop across R1, if we have 10 at the top and 0 at the bottom, we must drop 10 volts across it. R2, same thing, must be 10 volts. And R3, again, same story, must also be 10 volts. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. If I know two things in any row, I can figure out the other two. So if I know voltage and resistance across R1, I can figure out the current by Ohm's law. If V equals IR, then I must equal V over R, or 10 volts over 30 ohms, which is going to be one-third of an amp, or 0.33 amps. Same calculation for R2, and the same calculation for R3. That means that we must have 0.33 amps through R1, 0.33 amps through R2, and 0.33 amps through R3. Now, current can neither be created nor destroyed. You can't lose or gain electrons or charge. So if we have 0.33 amps coming into this node and 0.33 coming into this, we must have 0.66 amps going this direction. And now at this node, if we've got 0.33 coming in and 0.66 coming in, you must have the same amount going out. 0.33 plus 0.66 is right about 1 amp. So our total current is 1 amp. That makes sense. If you look on your reference table under parallel circuit, it says that the total current, I total, is I1 plus I2 plus I3. It also says that the total voltage is the same as the voltage for your entire circuit, 10, 10, and 10. Well, now we can figure out our equivalent resistance. R equals V over I, or 10 volts over 1 amp, is going to be 10 ohms, which is exactly what you would get if you had followed through with this equation. You would have found, eventually, that REQ equals 10 ohms. Now, while we're here, let's check out our powers. Power is I times V, right? Or it's I squared R, or it's V squared over R. Any of those formulas will work. But let's do IV, because that looks pretty easy here in this table. For R1, the power dissipated in resistor 1 is IV, or 0.33 amps times 10 volts, or 3.3 watts. Same for R2, same for R3. And our total power dissipated, we could add those up, or we could do IV for the total, 10 times 1. Either way, we get 10 watts as our total power dissipated in the circuit. Once again, the physics works. Take your time, make the VERP table, and just be very, very careful of your units. You always have to use standard SI units, volts, amps, ohms, and watts.